Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a very, very good old friend of mine. He also happens to be the 2019 Arnold Classic South America champion. Couldn't be prouder than him. I'd like to introduce Juan Morel. Back to the show. How you doing? That's a party. <laughs> You're the Arnold. Cha How did, let me ask you right off the bat. How was it uh, getting interviewed by Arnold Schwarzenegger? I know that was a dream of yours always. How did it feel? It was surreal. I mean, it was definitely a dream. Um, uh, it it was something that I wanted for a very long time, and it felt like it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna happen because I got so many seconds. So I kind of just got used to seconds. So it was like, well, I'm gonna go do the show, but I'm probably gonna get second, but I'm gonna aim to win. So. Uh, <laughs> You know, I just, I guess after a while, after getting second so many times, you just start expecting it, you know? Yeah. Well, you, yeah. you've won a lot of shows before, but you've never won the big one, like the big Arnold Classics or the Olympia, obviously. So that was what was making you, driving you to try to, you know, to try to be better. And, you know, this show was canceled last year. They didn't have the uh, IFEB Pro League down there. And then they switched it at the last minute and they decided they were going to hold it. Um, what made you decide to do uh, this particular event? Um, well, to be honest, I decided to do the show four weeks out. Wow. I, I did a 10 week prep. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the show. So I said, all right, so I'm going to start prepping for the show at 10 weeks out. And usually I like doing a 16 week prep and die nice and slow and mm. have my cheat days and stuff like that. So, um, I kind of wanted to enjoy family after the Olympia. I did a lot of like, you know, traveling. We went to Disney. We just did a lot of family stuff. And mm -hmm. I, I wanted to enjoy the holidays. And I really wasn't, my mind wasn't ready for prep yet. So at 10 weeks out, I decided to, you know, like I'm going to start prep. So I cut out all the junk food. I mean, I kept the cheat meal in once a week. Right. But I just, um, I cut out no sugar, you know, just, you know, dieting and, you know, dieting like a normal bodybuilder. Right. Which is not something that you normally do. Hey. Yeah, but, but I actually liked it a lot better because I felt more more energy because my my um I wasn't getting the crashing from the like the high sure like the high sugars and all that stuff. So I actually you know I, I liked it better, and I and and I thought about doing it anyways because I was like you know what I want to bring my condition to the next level, and I want to have more of an aesthetic look this time around, right. which right. make my waist a little bit smaller. So I, there was things that I really wanted to do already. So that's what happened around. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start prep at 10 weeks out. At four weeks out, if I feel like I'm not ready, I'm not going to do the show. Yeah. And four weeks out, I felt like I was I was like, oh, wow, I'm where I need to be. So, I mean, I was 296 when I started the prep. And um, so I, 10 weeks out, and, you know, I was ready to, ready to rock and roll. Came um, April 13th. Yeah. Well, in introduce your daughter because she's in the background there to hey, us. Bella, come here, baby. Say hi. She's, what is she, like a month older than my son, I think? Yeah, they're, they're, about, they're, they're in the same. She's December 19th. Say hello. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's a month a month older. Say hi. How? Tell her, did you like Daddy's trophy? You don't want to talk right now? <laughs> they get they, they don't stop talking, and then you put them on camera, and they, they clam up. You know, that's my she son. She's good the with thing. the camera, but I guess she's just, I don't know. She I guess she knows that I want her to talk now. Yeah. Well, it was good seeing you. And Say hi. hi. Say hi to everyone out there in RX Muscle Land. Say hi. Those are your fans. Say hi to your fans. Say hi to your friends. Come Can you on. get a bicep pose for us? No. You know how to do a bicep pose. Come on. My okay. son, I want to do is tell my son, do the Hulk. And he, and he, and he, he hits because. the pose. All right. Daddy's girl. So you just, so basically, you know, I think one, sometimes for you, because your metabolism is so fast, it's almost better that you don't, tra you don't diet too long because then you get like uh, you don't know what to do with yourself, so to speak, because you get in shape so quickly, especially if you eat clean, like you said. Um, I actually, um, like, I'm, 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 I think I'm, I'm not as sped as I used to be. I mean, I still get in shape pretty fast, but I don't, I don't need as much food as I used to. I don't get flat anymore. Right. So right. that's actually something that's really new to me in the last, I would say, last two years. This prep, I started to get flat because I actually started dieting hard, but I actually liked it because... I haven't felt flat in the last two years, but I right. also started, like, I started dieting hard, like a normal bodybuilder. I started cutting out fats. Uh -huh. My carbs are still, 
like they were low, but they were uh, they were low for me, but they were like around 180, but they were still like that was the lowest I went, and um and that was like you know I caught cycling it was like 180 the right. low that would do a, a a high day which would, would go like six eight hundred, then I would go really high day to like a thousand, so you know it all depends, but um like I still um you know but I was cutting out my fats, I was always I was dieting with a lot of fats throughout my whole career, and then I actually for the last Four weeks of this, I really like cut my fats out to like maybe eight grams a day. So not a little bit more, yeah. Because of from, from protein, but then a lot of the proteins that I were using were like like um egg egg whites, you know like um you know a little bit of chicken here, but most of the like it was like really really low fats. Right. So, so. Now we Juan, we've seen you win the New York Pro before. We've seen you do shows during the year where you look really good, you know. We're, we're saying this is the Juan Morel we, we want to see. And then come Olympia time, it seems like you, you get flattened out or, or something happens to your physique. Is it hard for you to peak multiple times a year, maybe because you're a bigger bodybuilder? I just try, I try experiment too much. So, <laughs> you know, me trying to do my own thing, I try yeah. experiment too much. And I started going back to what works for me. Because if you remember from, um, you know, like 2014, 13 and 15, I was very consistent with my condition always. I, I did what worked. Then after that, I kind of was trying to experiment because I got caught up in the numbers game of having had it be a certain weight. Right. And the thing was, like, at the New York Pro, when I won, weight, you know, was, like, it was, like, 264, 265. Mm. And then right. after that, like, I've been chasing that number. But every time I'm on that, I weigh the same on that on the stage and I look like that, I don't, I don't look the same. So it's, like, you know... Um, I've been, you know, I tried. To, I got caught up in the in, in the game of trying to wait, make a certain weight. And this time around, I'm like, you know, sometimes you have different scales. Sometimes the scale, you know, it, it, it all depends. So I, I I told myself I'm not gonna worry about the scale. I'm gonna go by how I look. And I compared pictures. I looked bigger, way bigger than what I was 2015. Hmm. Um, my condition was a lot. I was. This is probably the hardest I've ever been. I mean, like, yeah. Um, it was hard to see in video. You had to be there to actually attest, like. When I got on stage and I got off, when I got off stage, all everybody talked about was like, "Oh my God, you were so grainy! Like you, you, you looked like it was when I moved. You just saw the right. Fiber. It doesn't translate into video sometimes, right? I got yeah. you. Yeah, but I was like everything was popping. What did you weigh? Two hundred and fifty-five pounds. Wow, so you were ten pounds lighter. Yeah, but it worked for you. Yeah, and I, I like the look. You know, I like I had more like I, I just loved the look. I thought it was um. It suits me more, so it's like I'm not getting caught up in the size game anymore, you know? Hmm. How do you think this look, however, will, will translate onto an Olympia stage? From um, the feedback that I got um, was that I could definitely be a top six person if I was to come looking like this at the Olympia. Okay, that's, that's so, a good compliment. I'm sure that was came from Steve Weinberger because he was head judge. Well, I actually haven't talked to Steve Weinberger. No, oh, it wasn't him. Okay. So uh, it came up from um, other people that I spoke to. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Is this a look that you're looking for? Do you want to be a little fuller? Um, I was pretty full. Um, if I mean, like I said, it's hard to, to you know, like it's gonna be hard to get on video, especially when the competitors are stepping in front of, the, in front of you to look bigger in front of the video right. or, or cam right. cameras. You know, um, I you know I wasn't trying to step in front. I just posed, but um, <laughs> uh, I was pretty pretty full, and that's one of the things that a lot of the compliments that I got, especially for people that were there, they're like, oh my god, you were so full. And hard and round, so like um, the fullness was there, and so was the condition. So I mean, I if I could, I could have probably pushed a little bit to be a little fuller, but I'd rather have that grainy look and mm. you know maybe lose a five percent of fullness and look like that than um. Right. And my legs were full, so that's the whole thing. My legs didn't flatten out this prep, right. so. Now the I mean the good thing is we all know conditioning wins shows, and and that's you 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 have that ability to get grainy hard, and to, obviously to give that gift up would be to make yourself like everyone else. So I think you have to definitely play to the the conditioning strength you have. I thought you beat Raphael based on structure being bigger and also conditioning. I thought you were conditioned more conditioned than he was from behind, especially in the lower body, and I think that's what won a few. And I think that that wins a lot of shows for a lot of people. And I think that you know you can't take that for granted, you know that you know the judges like to see you know no body fat on you, and, and that's really what it amounts to. And and plus you have a bigger structure. I kind of equated it to the win that Kuklo got over Akeem Williams two weeks earlier, where he just kind of was a bigger structure than Akeem. 
And I think that that was just looks more impressive on stage. Yeah, I mean, um, Rafael was an amazing competitor. Um, you know, like his lines, he's got beautiful shape. Um, you know, like he's very aesthetic. That's one of the things that we had in common with both aesthetic bodybuilders. Obviously, different shape, but um, you know, he um, very humble person. Treated me so nice when I was out there. Um, you know, the Brazilian fans were amazing. It was, you know, like, and you know, it was a, it was um, he was a a very great competitor. And also Akeem. I mean, we don't, you know, if he was a hundred percent, I mean, who knows? You know, I mean, he's sure. so dangerous. You know, like that that boy has got so much muscle. He's just a freak. Yeah, and he obviously we talked about the fact that he had a visa issue. He, he flew in the same day as the show, and so unfortunately for him, you know, it just it, it didn't work out for him, especially because he holds a lot of water, especially on on, on a long hour, a long flight like that. You obviously got in there a couple of days before, let yourself acclimate, and I think that was a smart way to go. Obviously, yeah. So now, where Tarek, do you go from? Tarek El Gundy was the one that told me. I spoke to Tarek, and and um after the show, it was Tarek and um. And uh, and Tamer we were talking at the table, and they really we were talking about my look and how I, how they think I would look with that look on the Olympia stage. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Oh, they, yeah, they, and they're great guys too. I know both of them yeah. very well. Now, moving forward, obviously, I know you love New York. I know you love to do the New York Pro every year. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Is this something you, you're you're planning on doing? Or are you shutting it down to the Olympia now? I haven't decided to be honest. Um, um, it's been something that I because the thing was, um. I told myself, well, you know, like I said, I mean, I was hoping to win, but if I didn't, I'm going to do New York. And um, it's my hometown. It's so hard because I have so many. I mean, you've been there. You've seen how the fans get, yeah. you know, like the same way that the crowd gets for Rafael, they get there to me. <laughs> so um, I know a lot of fans want to see me. And the thing is, you know, I, I feel that um, that I like to compete. You know, it's like I'm not one of those bodybuilders that, Sure. That feels like they, you know, like they don't. They did a show, and I know I can. I get. I get. I grow into shows anyway. So, you know. So I'm thinking about it because I don't think. You know. I mean, obviously, if I was to shut it down right now, I got 12 weeks to have an off season and then start prep for the for the Olympia. And if I do the New York, then it's eight weeks. But I mean, I feel either way, I can, you know, I can make it work. So I'm gonna decide. I haven't decided 100. percent now, for you, dieting is not quite as hard as for some other guys. Like, I asked Akeem Williams the same thing. I said, Akeem, are you going to do it in New York? He goes, are you crazy? That's five weeks away. I can't keep dieting that long. He's going to do the Spain show in two weeks, which I thought is funny because I know Akeem has to kill himself to get in shape. But for you, it's like you're eating a lot of food. You know, it's not like you're, 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 you're suffering, but you're not suffering like some of these other guys have to. So I think it's a little easier for you to maybe hit multiple shows, whereas other guys, they, they can't last, you know, with, with the level of the cardio they have to do and the amount of, of, of torture they have to put their bodies through. My body functions better too when I'm in a pre-contest mode. Like I get stronger. Like if mm. people, you don't watch videos, I'm I'm doing rolls of 500 yeah. pounds. I saw that. You know, um, like my, my my I'm just a stronger person when I'm leaner as opposed to when I'm heavier. I actually lose all that strength. Mm. So um, I don't know. I like training when I'm dieting too. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> well, Juan, I wanted to say very, we're all very proud of you here at RX Muscle. I mean, you. You're a guy, when you first started your career, you were in our studio in New York almost every week. We, we did a ton of stuff, videos with you, and we all knew you were going to be a star at some point in the future. I told you that multiple times over, and uh, it's great to see you finally really arrive. I mean, you arrived or a couple years ago, but to win the Arnold Classic is another feather in your cap, and uh, now it's on to the Olympia, and uh, I just want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Dave, and I appreciate you, you know, since day one. I mean, you know, you were my coach, and... You know, like a lot of, you know, just because people ask all the time, why did you guys part way? You pretty much taught me I wanted to teach myself. And I feel in order to be a coach, you know, you, you know, successful coach, you have to, you know, learn with yourself and then teach Absolutely. others. So, you know, I, I learned a lot from you and I'm very thankful and, and you know, and grateful. So, you know, thank you. And I want to thank all my um, all my fans out there, my sponsors, um, Apollo Nutrition, um, my home gym, Bev's and um, my wife, Karen and Isabella. And destiny now it's a party <laughs> it's all about the family that's for sure uh, no doubt about that and of course we'll let we'd like to thank flex magazine for allowing you to do the interview uh giving permission to uh, talk to us because it's you know I, I hate with the exclusivity sometimes because you know especially because we're friends and i like to be able to showcase you especially in a victory like this so congratulations once again we'll see it maybe we'll see you up on the new york pro stage if not we're going to definitely see you in that olympia lineup and hopefully you'll take home that top six finish this year Yes, and yes, thank you, Flex Magazine. I'm sorry, those are my sponsors as well. Thank you guys for the support since day one, and, um, and thank you for allowing us to have this interview. 
All right, guys, and that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.